Hello everyone and welcome back to the Real Positive Girl podcast. My name is Sabrina. Happy Friday everyone. If today is your weekend, happy weekend. We made it to the weekend. And if today is not your weekend, I totally understand. And whenever your weekend is or was, I hope that it was fantastic. Gave you some time to rest, recuperate, get stuff done. Just have a good time in general. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Happy Friday. Um, just a reminder that this week we are talking about personal boundaries. And today is the last episode in this week. And it's kind of sad, but I know that in many episodes to come in different um, topics every week, I'm sure I will always bring up boundaries, but it is definitely something that is super close to my heart and really important and something that I am constantly working on all the time. So Anyway, um, I hope that your Friday is going really well, and if it just started, I hope it's awesome. I hope that the whole day is absolutely fantastic, and if you're in the middle of your day or, you know, you're at the end of your day and it's not good and it's sucky and terrible and you want it to end so badly, I get you. I understand. I've been there. We've all been there, and I just encourage you to take my five minute challenge and find some time to be alone, to find some peace, to reboot, to come back to baseline and think about four to five things that you're grateful for and just re-humble your mindset and at least be able to walk away feeling neutral about the rest of the day, not wanting to throw the whole thing away, feeling positive enough to know that the you can glean some other positive tidbits from the rest of the day and also to take some time to problem solve how you can make the rest of the day better or the next day so that you can actually have a good day. So anyway, I just hope that everyone's day is actually going well. So today, the last episode of the week, we're going to talk about remember to do what is best for you and how to set boundaries. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. Um, Let me start by listing some of the benefits of of establishing boundaries better relationships, greater assertiveness, more compassion, less anger and resentment, feeling respect for yourself and others, increased confidence, less stress and anxiety. Something I mentioned in yesterday's episode, I will repeat again today, is to address boundary violations early so things don't get out of hand or you let your feelings build up. That's not good for anyone especially you. And I wanted to make sure that I repeated it again because, you know, when you set your boundaries, you're definitely going to have this happen where you need to address boundary violations because if you don't, things can get out of hand very quickly. Also, if you don't get into the habit of addressing boundary violations, people will not take your boundaries seriously. They will try to take advantage of you, walk all over you, and it'll all be for nothing. So I greatly encourage you to still address them early, get it out of the way, it'll be much easier going forward. Um, Some key things for how to set boundaries and maintain those successfully is to start with clearly identifying your own boundaries and know why you need them. So you might go ahead and create a list and identify that you know, you want to make sure that you only share so much with this friend group and you want to challenge yourself to share more with your partner at home and you want to tell yourself, okay, you know, you don't feel comfortable going out and partying and you need to make sure that you stay within your routine, you know, and you have decided that these certain topics are just off limits for you because they're like triggers for you for certain things. Totally fine. Um, And then you've established all these boundaries but do you really know why? Do you know why that you've chosen those things? And do you know why you need them? You really need to take some time to think about why do I need this? How is this going to make me a better person? How is this going to make me feel more comfortable, more confident, more, more loving of myself? Like really think about those things. You might not think that you need that. You're like, no, I don't need to know why. I just need them. But if you don't actually understand why you need them, then it'll be much harder for you to actually maintain those boundaries going forward because you won't have anything to tap into of like, okay, what's the reason why I need to continue to maintain this boundary? Why is it super important to me? What does it bring to me? Those are the whys that you absolutely need to know. 
Um, and I know I am always bringing it back to self-awareness, but you have to know that it's important. It's an absolute in your entire life. So be becoming more self-aware of understanding your whys and your hows and how that all plays into your mindset and what's going on in your life will actually bring you so much joy and happiness you don't even understand. And maybe um, becoming self-aware is super new to you. And that's totally fine. I'll, it's a new to a lot of people. And that's okay. Or maybe people are familiar with it, but they didn't really take it seriously or they didn't really take the time to actually get to know themselves and understand themselves fully and emotionally. That's fine. Just take the time to do it though. Um, at some point, even if you do it in little bits along the way, you, your life will be so much better. You'll understand yourself more. You'll be able to um, uh, perceive when things are going to happen that will dramatically change your mood or your mental state or affect you negatively negatively and you're able to jump in before those things happen um, as much as possible and just live a better life in general and have better relationships too. <laughs> um, after you do both of those things, make sure you are always straightforward with others about boundaries and don't apologize or give any long explanations for implementing your boundaries, you know, because it's your decision to make and others should respect that. And I definitely want to emphasize sure, should because People just will decide not to or don't feel like you're taking it seriously, so they won't take it seriously until you take it seriously. And I am a firm believer in the way that you treat yourself is an example of how other people should treat you. So if you don't treat yourself with respect and love and care, then I don't see any reason why you should expect other people to do that as well. Um, if they do, that's amazing. And those people are beautiful, beautiful people in your life that you should definitely not take for granted, but not everyone's going to be like that. And so I definitely want you to keep that in mind. The way that you treat yourself is an example of how other people should treat you. So treat yourself the way that you want others to treat you. Just take that piece of advice. And even if you turn the podcast off right here, I know that you'll at least be able to cling to something that'll be so beneficial for your life. Um, but yeah, make sure you're totally straightforward with others about your boundaries. Don't beat around the bush. Don't be like, hey, you know, you know, you might feel uncomfortable the first couple of times talking to people about it. It'll get easier the more that you do it. Maybe even some people in your life that you can trust, you know, your support team, maybe even see as silly as it sounds, ask them if you can practice talking about it with them on the regular so that when uh, other people you know, come into the mix and you have to talk to them about it, then you're able to do that easily without it feeling super uncomfortable or stumbling over your words or just feeling like really out of it, really like not sure of what's going on or what you should actually say or what will be the most definitive, straightforward way to share that with them. Um, and then also, again, don't apologize or give any long explanations for why you're implementing boundaries because your decision to implement boundaries is your decision and they should just respect you for that because there's no reason for you to apologize because you're not doing anything wrong. You didn't harm them. You're not hurting them. But yes, yes, it might affect them in a social way that you're not willing to do this or any of that anymore but it doesn't matter like yeah maybe it'll affect them that way but it's going to affect you in a better way to not do those things or to do other things that they didn't normally do like stick up for themselves whatever it is so just realize that you don't have to apologize if you haven't done anything wrong no explanations are warranted or needed um, unless you're willing to give them, but I don't think you should like have long drawn out ones because I feel like you're just trying to justify yourself where you're just making a healthy choice for yourself and that's what's important. Also, um, I would make sure you are cognizant of how you share this with others. Make sure you're always calm and polite. So <laughs> you don't want to come off super zealous and aggressive and be like, this is the way it's going to be. You know, no one's going to like change my mind or tell me otherwise. You better treat me this way, blah, blah, blah. Like don't come in like, like an army, like shouting to the rooftops, like this and this and this is what you've established now and these are the rules and whatever because like yeah maybe you'll be excited that you're actually going to implement something in your life that's really going to be beneficial to you but you don't want to be rude about it you don't want to be super pushy you just want to be like assertive but calm and polite and nice and if they want to talk back to you or say rude things back to you that is not an excuse or a door for you to do the same to them you need to treat them with respect and be the bigger person but I just want to remind you to do it in a calm and polite way so that they can mirror that back 
Um, don't let guilt eat you up either. Know it's okay to say no, do less things, and have a little bit more breathing room for yourself. You know, by saying no to more things that whether you want to do them or not, but you want to do them, you just don't have the bandwidth or the resources to do it, it's going to give you so much time back. You know, you're going to feel like you have so much more time in your life because you're saying no to these things that are really not going to benefit you and then you have time to work on things that are going to benefit you. Um, even if it's just like you saying no to being involved in some big project that all your friends are doing, even if it seems like something super wholesome, like a volunteer project, but you're just like, no, it's not really going to benefit me. You just, you don't feel it in your heart. You don't feel confident, confident about it. I would just encourage you to just be okay with that and know how much time you're going to get to actually, you know, even if it's just sitting home and watching TV, maybe it, that's not something you get to do and maybe you just need that for your anxiety, for your mindset. You just need to be able to sit back and chill and breathe in the air and know that everything's going to be okay because you were able to say no and do what you want to do. And that's totally fine. Don't feel guilty about that. I know it's going to be hard. Believe me, it's hard for me still sometimes too, but... I feel like I've gotten more courage over the years and it's just felt really good. Um, a couple quick points to end this week's series on. Um, get your happiness from gratitude, not status. And I know you're like, well, how does this even fit into boundaries? Well, if you find yourself saying yes to things, even if you want to say no, or even if you do want to say yes, but you know that you should say no because it's not really within like your scope of being able to do that for your mindset, for your, phys for your physicality, whatever it is. Um, but you find yourself saying yes and going with things because you know that hanging out with that person will give you some sort of clout or they'll make you feel better or you get any sort of like special perks from being able to do that or it makes you feel really good to like hang out with those people because it boosts your ego or whatever. I just encourage you to find the happiness in your life in gratitude, the things that you can be grateful for, the things that you're blessed with in your life and not your status, not who you're hanging out with, not what clubs you get to get into, not what job you have, you know, not what crowd you hang with, none of that. You know, I want you to find it in the gratitudes in your life, not in your status, not who you are, not how much money you make either, you know, not how big of an icon you are in your community, but just the things that you are grateful for and create a boundary within that, like within not letting status dictate your life, but let gratitude dictate your life. Um, focus on your progress of maintaining boundaries um, and focus on the progress of that and not the perfection because, because you might think, oh my gosh, this is going to be so hard. And then you get on a roll and everything's going good. And then there's a couple bumps in the road and you want to just throw the whole thing away because you weren't able to, um, continue with your role of everything being perfect and maintaining your boundaries. No, don't think like that. Just realize that no one's perfect. We're all going to make mistakes and there's going to be bumps in the road because there's going to be people that don't accept us. You're not, you're going to have times where you don't even accept yourself. You know, respect is going to be high and low. Um, and then there's going to be a couple blurry lines with certain groups of friends or people or whomever in your life. There's going to be ups and downs and just realize that and know that nothing has to be perfect just as long as you're doing your best to maintain those boundaries and you have a good support system behind you, even if that's only one person. Um, let me just end this by talking about how you need to prioritize your needs and ask for help when you need it. So prioritize your needs and how those are super important to you and how you really need to be taking your mental health and wellness and even your physical body first before you're trying to help other people, before you're trying to be beneficial to others. Because if you can't help yourself to be strong enough, you're not going to be able to help other people. And I know that's a worn out phrase, but it's a true one. It's something I definitely want you to know and to remember. So you need to prioritize your needs and ask for help when you need it. So if you're having a hard time and you know that you need to be saying no or yes to something or you need to be creating a boundary, but you just can't find the strength to do it within yourself, but you know that you're someone on your support team can help you. Or if you don't really feel like you have a a supports team, maybe your spouse or maybe like a counselor that you're seeing. I just, or if you don't have a counselor and you feel like you need one to like back up and make your support team even stronger, then seek out help. So maybe you want to find a, um, 
a counselor, or maybe you want to find like a wellness coach, a life coach, or maybe you want to find um, like some other type of counsel or help or person that can be a um, strong guidance in your life. They can help you. They can be part of your support system that will that you can lean on and talk to and really feel like you can become close with. So I just encourage you to find the help when you need it. Um, just don't feel the pride that comes in not wanting to reach out for help because you will fall so far if you don't just stick out your hand and ask for help and be like, hey, I need help. I need the assistance, even if it's just for a little bit. I'm not saying that once you ask for help, then you have to have help forever. No, absolutely not. You're just asking for help for during that time, or maybe it is forever. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's it's actually showing that you are strong and you care about yourself enough and other people in your life that you um, that you interact with and that um, reflects on you that you are doing something good for yourself and that is that shows true character and strength and love and it doesn't matter what other people think because other people's opinions are stupid. So, um, <laughs> to a point of them judging you for doing things that are good for you, that they don't have, um, the respect and love and care and courage to do for themselves. So I'm going to end it there. Um, again, happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining me for the podcast. I hope that you really enjoyed it. I hope that it was beneficial for you. I hope that, <laughs> that it was good. And if it was good and you want, and you know, someone else that really benefit from it, I encourage you to share it with them. Um, and if you would like, you can check the description box for any notes for the show or where to find me on Instagram or my email address. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or want to just like send me a prayer request or whatever it is, I am open to that. So I really hope that you've enjoyed. If you listen to the whole week, I hope that you enjoyed all the episodes about personal boundaries. If you missed anything, please feel free to go back. The episodes are always available um, and check out any previous weeks for topics that might interest you or someone else that you know. But again, happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining me again. My name is Sabrina. This is the Real Positive Girl Podcast and I hope you have a great weekend and I can't wait to see you guys next week for our new topic that I don't know what it is yet, but it's going to be awesome. So until then, have a good one. Bye.